And welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors Channel. My name is Chris, bringing it to you from Westlake Village, California. It's bright, it's beautiful, and it is Tuesday, Taco Tuesday. And again, what's going on in the market? I think the most present chart on the graph right now is NASDAQ, uh, down 248 points, down 1.6%. And looks like we're going for that gap fill on the uh, 12 hours looking uh, relatively droopy here. And yeah, we do close anywhere here or lower. I will be targeting, I mean, next move down to 15,100, short stop at 14,857. Does look like uh, we're getting a bit of a cool off for Mr. NASDAQ. And yeah, targeting that $15,000 level first for a bounce. Okay, that's it. So does give it a, a bit of a bearish bias for Bitcoin. You'd expect Dixie is rallying, uh, rallying into our trend line here. <coughs> And what did I want to talk about really quick before I get into the, the charts and the Bitcoin price action? By the way, don't forget, like and subscribe to the channel if you want to get these updates on a daily basis. If you enjoy some of the content, feel free to like that button and back into it. So Paxos, Paxos, thrilled to be partnering with PayPal to bring PYUSD, the world's safest back digital asset to hundreds of millions of consumers, merchants worldwide. PYUSD is the first of its kind, representing the next Phase the US dollar blockchain. This is not just a milestone moment for Paxos and PayPal, but the entire financial industry. And uh, look, again, this is significant. Why? 70% of eBay's transactions are done through PayPal. Those customers are now going to potentially be able to settle their transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. Essentially, that would be good for Ethereum and new people are going to get more and more exposure to crypto. That's the bull case, the bear case. Well, uh, PayPal stablecoin is written in an extremely old version of Solidity. Allows the owner to pause all transfers. Allows the owner to freeze addresses to prevent actions. And allows admins to increase the total supply at will. So centralized but transparent at least. And that, um, you know, is the point for the bears and centralized control. That is not what we want as a CBDC. And hey, we already have a centralized, uh, a central, we already have a CDBC called the US dollar, right? So um, that's the other side of the coin there. I don't know if we need uh, PayPal getting more and more control as they were one of the ones that censored people during the old C times when, um, Essentially, they yanked $2,500 out of people who were supposedly spreading misinformation about the C. Oh boy. Anyways, uh, that's it out of me on that one, jumping into the chart. So Dixie goes up, risk assets typically go down. We said, this is the pivot on the market we need to be aware of. If we start closing dailies above 103.50 and specifically hold above there, right? You wanna see some kind of a breakout like this. If you're bullish on the dollar, boom, boom. Something like that would be, uh, you know, ideal if you're bullish on the on the dollar. Let's get into the Bitcoin chart as Bitcoin putting in a rally in the face of the dollar and Nasdaq coming down. And that's why I tend to think that this move is going to get faded here. We just had a four hour closure, though, not above the range highs. We were talking about yesterday um, saying potentially we could front run it with a closure above twenty nine five. Um, but I would probably be waiting for this area right here to get uh, a closure above there for that continuation play. Volatility is increasing. Momentum will cross down on the next closure below 29.5. So it needs to, you know, get some direct continuations from here. Otherwise, this move is going to get faded. And on the hourly time frame, um, you know, we are consolidating. We need some volume to come in here and NASDAQ to pick, pick itself up by its bootstraps, essentially. That's what Bitcoin needs right now. Um, and uh, it looks like, you know, the next liquidity zone everybody's talking about, 30,100. 30, I would expect some heavy sell pressure to come in there. And then what else? What else? I'm gonna turn that phone off here. Um, so resolving the range short term looks like a little bit of continuations uh, to the upside. Volatility is beginning to wane here. 
I actually think this move is gonna get faded very similarly to, and I'm just giving you my gut here. This isn't TA here. This is just, uh, this is just looking at uh, what happened last time. We had this, you know, bearish engulfing candle. Well, look, interplay is a bit different here. And that's why I'd say this 29.7 pivot is gonna be critical on the four hour, you know, really back above there. And, um, you know, we're gonna be targeting that green box, but uh, essentially below there, you're below the 0.5 and the 6.18. And that is where your bull traps come in. And we have a low volatility. So on the daily time frame, we're expecting, you know, about a 20% move in either direction. And currently that move is going to be pivoted to the upside. Where does 20% take us? 10% to the top side of the range. Also notice this is a bit of a falling wedge, very similarly to we had uh, last time. But we are coming right into resistance right there. Uh, on the last falling wedge, technically these uh, do like to break to the upside. And I would have it drawn in like that. And the measure move off that, you measure from the 50 percentile and uh, typically breaks at 75% full. Well, we are 75% full right now. And measure move is back to 31,600 on this one. Now, remember we had a perfect measure move hit on this one. Very similar price action where we dipped down, sucked in liquidity and popped it back up. Again, you know, confirmation you can see really was when we took out that prior high. What's that prior high? Well, right here on the daily time frame, that is your last major lower high. If we take that out, potential for that trend reversal on the daily time frame. You could still argue that this is a bit of a complex high, complex low, but um, I'm not ready to call it yet. Weekly time frame. Yeah, and simply ticking above last week's high is going to, you know, give the impetus for a bit of a bounce. But again, with NASDAQ pulling back, you got to be aware uh, momentum is to the downside on the weekly as long as we're below 30,500. So we've got a, another thousand dollars of work to do. It's only Tuesday and we do have some economic news coming in later this week. Thursday, we've got jobless claims, inflation rate month over month and core inflation year over year and CPI. The CPI report coming out on Thursday and then on Friday, we got, oops, Friday, Friday, Michigan Consumer Sentiment Report, and that's PPIs on Friday. PPI is on Friday and then Thursday is the inflation rate, year, month over month. Okay. That's it for today, guys. Actually, I think I'm gonna step in to a little bit of some altcoins really quick as we were talking about this on the daily time frame. Oh, that bit of hunger is, is hitting me now. Breakfast is calling. Did we close below the pivot? No, we did not. So we held that uh, 18, three pivot. This is the point for the bulls for Ethereum and that inverted head and shoulders. As long as we don't take out that shoulder, technically you have a shot uh, for that move to play out still. Otherwise, big resolution to the downside. When we start closing dailies back below 1830. And um, I think that that could uh, potentially send us down to that, you know, lower target about 1650. 1650 and then structure on the weekly time frame for ethereum will start to break down um okay that's it for ethereum and oh eth bitcoin this is the more important chart i think to look at here uh even on the hourly time frame as as we see a tethered dump well uh what typically happens to our altcoin friends they typically get dumped on Something to be aware of right there. And then checking out, uh, so tether dominance on the short term coming down. On the daily, we did put in a higher high and a higher low. So uh, not good for the bulls there. We do start to break back below this seven percentile pivot. First warning sign really probably needs to get below this area to uh, really start to fail here at 6.75%. Uh, ETH Bitcoin chart is uh, playing out the downside route. So you'd expect uh, the Satoshi pairings to be losing against Bitcoin. And 
Well, the measured move on this would send ETH Bitcoin all the way back to the bottom side of the range. And that might be the time to maybe accumulate some altcoins down here. Um, just, you know, again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but uh, doing my best here. Checking in on the VIX. Well, when the VIX pops up, you know what happens. Volatility is up, typically stocks down and uh, Bitcoin playing the opposite side of the card. So that's why I'm a little bit, you know, uh, looking for potential fake outs here as we're coming into this major resistance. The purple 200 also showing himself right here on the four hour time frame as we do have a death cross on the four hour. And did we get the three day, the three day golden cross? I also heard that one today. Credit to Crown on that one. Um, Three day golden cross is present for, you know, only it's only happened a few times in Bitcoin's history going back. Um, and um, let's see if I can get the chart to pull up here. So we got, uh, well, uh, one back here. Boom. Never, never, uh, never uncrossed, I think, all the way up to 60,000 bucks from 10,000 to 60,000. This one back here from $400 to $20,000. And so that was two, two three-day golden crosses. And this one would have been back here for another monumentous rally, uh, but we don't have enough price action to populate it. So that's why it's not showing. All right, uh, that's a point for the bulls there. And, um, you know, again, why why kind of base case? You know, looking for some short-term downside, maybe a wick down to that 27.5 target. Um, but right now it's looking bullish. And, um, you know, by simply, you know, really closing a daily or a two-day back above this $30,000 level, um, definitely going to give the impetus for the bulls to take control here. And I would say that the bears need to get going if they are going to pull through. You got the two day freshly crossing up to the upside here. That could be good for a bounce here. Um, off the green 55, we got that low volatility read and this could be a big one. I mean, um, you know, frankly, if the weekly volatility starts to increase, you know, we could get a big, a big rocket up to the tune of about 50%. Why? Well. You can see weekly volatility is at the lowest level in Bitcoin's history on this chart on CMEs as well. Oh, not on CMEs. How are the CMEs looking here? Um, we'll cross up this week. Another thousand dollars higher. That would be a good warning sign. Hey, things are going to flip back around to the upside. And also, you know, bringing up the monthly is still, you know, relatively bullish here and um, why do I say that? Well, on the monthly time frame on my secondary chart, you can see the histogram has now uh, well flipped green for you know, and this is generally a bullish bullish sign on the monthly time frame for Bitcoin. We'll go back in time and look at all of the iterations, but you can do that for yourself. And I'm gonna wrap it up there, guys. Okay, I'm gonna go in one more, one more, a uh, couple more things here. Why I think gold is pulling back. In fact. Gold, um, losing the trend line. I'm looking for uh, gold at 1900 now. Um, pretty easy breakdown target there, gold at 1900. There are some platforms that allow you to trade gold. Um, silver, silver down to about 22, 22.30. Uh, Brent, oh yeah, I wanted to bring this narrative up as well. Um, the inflation narrative, right? So. They're expecting a little bit of a hotter read on inflation. Why? You can see for the month of August, July and August, in fact, uh, you know, oil, Brent, way, way up. For the month of August, 13% gainer from July's low up 20%. So oil's up 20% in the last two months. And that was our biggest Inflation reduction is, you know, energy costs had gone down, oil had gone down significantly. And so could we get a little bit of a inflation narrative coming back? I'll bring the report out tomorrow. If you did, uh, again, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll be back to you guys tomorrow.
with some more updates. I guess I'll throw on two, two more coins that I've had my eye on here. Casper, um, on the four hour time frame, putting in a nice potential uh, higher low bounce. Uh, this is typically the area you would be looking for a trending bounce. Although, um, you know, a deeper target on the two day time frame, we did tick below, got a test of the nine. And yeah, if it's gonna bounce, it's gonna bounce from here. You know, any kind of daily closure back below 43 cents and uh, well, it's probably gonna come down pretty hard. And, um, you know, and this one's still bullish as long as we're above 33 cents. Uh, you know, this one has skyrocketed off the lows and is, you know, from a weekly perspective, well, making higher highs and higher lows, right? Um, on a per candle basis, so maybe we'll get another big one. That's why I wanted to bring it up to you. The other one is optimism, which is pulling back from the highs right now and uh, putting in a bit of an interesting candle, almost a bearish engulfing. Um, I have been looking at this one for short-term pullbacks like Casper. This is uh, typically the bouncy area off that green 55. Pretty easy way to manage risk. How would I do that? Well, um, let's see if I can put on my regular chart here. Pretty, pretty hard way to manage risk. <laughs> but any kind of a closure back below that low, okay, on the four hour party's over. And uh, that's how I'd be looking at that one. Optimism up and to the right for that one. And all right, I'm going to leave it off with that. Have a blessed and highly favored day. We'll be back tomorrow and I'll sign up there. Take care.